Right, welcome back from an ad break. Um, as mentioned, our topic is business opportunity and related uh, factors. So we're now doing the last part, which is designing research instrument. Remember, in order for you to be able to identify uh, the right product that you want to get or to identify your potential market, you need to do what we call a market research. And in your market research, you are finding out who your buyers are, who is your target market, and all those things that they like. And in the, the tool, there's a certain tool that you have to use. So to get all of that, to identify that, you need to design the research instruments basically. So research instruments is used to do what? To assess the needs and the desires. So a research instrument, this is a definition, it's a device or a tool that can be used to gather information or to form a set of guidelines for observation. So entrepreneurs usually develop a research instrument to find out about people's needs and desires. Like I said, you don't just wake up in the morning and you start selling whatever, pens maybe, for example. You first need to gather information. You need to do, to get, um, to do a research. We call that the market research and find out who your customers are or who will your customers be and will they really like or appreciate a pen and how much would they prefer for it to be sold at. So you need to do all of that. But what is the whole point of doing that? A criteria of a good research instrument. Remember that good instrument, it needs to give you relevant information, information that you're going to use, information that you need. You don't want uh, at the end of the day to get the information or the information from the potential market, but the information is useless maybe, or it's, it's not objective, it's biased maybe, we don't need that. So what is the criteria? So the first thing that we need to get is that a research instrument should be valid. What do we mean by it being valid? It says a research instrument is valid if it collects the raw information that you planned to collect. I say raw information because uh, data is another word for raw information. So it, we consider that to be, inform to be valid. Number two, if it's reliable, if we can rely on the information that you've received, if the same results will be obtained from the same person, if that part person participated in the research a second second time around. So we say it's reliable. So that is a criteria of a good instrument. So lastly, is it not biased? Right. So uh, we should avoid bias. It means that the research instrument must be objective and not subjective. What does that mean? It is biased if, for example, it favors one side over another because it is you, you are my aunt, you are selling this, definitely I would buy it. Then you are being biased. So now uh, it should avoid a bias. That is a criteria of a good research instrument. We move on. So now we've got the types of research instruments. So if we want to get all the information uh, that's going to assist us to identify a business opportunity, you can use the first research instrument being questionnaires. Right, which questionnaires are designed to collect information from people about their attitudes, about their preferences, about the level of knowledge, about personalities, or beliefs. Remember, you don't just wake up and say, I am selling uh, a pen, it's three rent. No, you don't do that. You need to first gather information. Who are your, or what are their preferences? Who, who do you think is going to be your target market? Who are your customers? And how much of pens do they know of, like the level of knowledge? What kind of people am I selling to? What is their income levels, maybe? Those are the type of things that you need to um, gauge or to assess. A questionnaire consists of a series of questions that are developed to gain information from the respondents. Who are the respondents? Respondents could be your potential market or your potential target market, basically. So it needs to help you. It needs to give you that information because if you are doing a, a, a questionnaire, but yet you're not getting the information that you need, then again, it's a futile exercise. Respondents give answers in writing. Responses may be immediate or direct or need to be emailed, especially now because we are in uh, the fourth industrial revolution or we are moving towards that, that we can email our responses 
uh, so that we can analyze them from the emails. All right, the second type of research instrument that we can use is interviews. Interviews is another way whereby we can get the information that we need. Remember interviews, there's two people there. There's an interviewer, there's interviewee. I will write it again, interviewer, and then we've got interviewee. Right, in this instance, I am the interviewer, and then you are the interviewee. So I'm interviewing you because I'm the one who, is, uh, who wants to sell or who is coming up with this um, business idea. I hope you've got that in mind. I am the interviewer, you are the interviewee. All right, let's move on. Business situations provide opportunities for interviews with employers, customers, or analysts, etc. The interviewer leads the interview. Like I said, I lead the interview by asking questions and the interviewee responds to the questions. Who is the interviewee? It's you or it can even be the client or the potential market. Do you understand? Remember, don't forget that. So I will lead the interview depending on the, what the questions that I have, isn't it? I will draft down all the questions that I want to ask so that I can get um, responses. So those responses will be collected from an individual or a group and will be recorded. So responses, we get the responses from who? From the interviewees. Right. Uh, with interviews, questions should be carefully prepared and selected to avoid bias. And remember when it's bias, it means it's not objective. The answers that we are getting, they are favor, they favor um, another person over another. So we will not get what we want. So questions should be carefully prepared to avoid anything that might be sensitive or offensive. So you need to think carefully about the questions that you're going to ask. Helps or interviews helps businesses to collect the same type of information from many people. Businesses do not require processing assistance as they are able to analyze the responses or the data. So that is the second type of research instrument that we can use to gather information that we want. All right. Lastly, we can even use surveys. Uh, to um, as, a, as a research instrument because we want the information that we need. So with the survey, so we're deciding on the best survey or the method to collect data. So decide on the best one. So either you can use telephonic surveys or you can use face-to-face -face surveys or one-on-one -on -one surveys, depending on, you know, with the telephone, they will say yes or no, rate us from excellent to good to average to to, to poor, it's up to you, then you're rating us. It's also an, an online survey. So depending on what, why we're using the survey for, but remember here, we are assessing what the needs and the desires. So you can use a survey if you want to, as long as it's gonna give you the information that you need. We have come to the end of our lesson. Don't forget, we spoke about what? The business opportunities here and assessing the needs and the desires. And we also looked at the research instruments for this particular uh, topic. So from me, Ms. Maboe, I will see you again next time. Goodbye.